So, hey everybody, it's great to be here with you. This morning, I heard a little bit earlier, Brent Daniels asked the question when Dustin was up here, uh, what are you doing with your membership? What are you doing inside that membership site? And Dustin's answer was, well, I think there's some opportunities there that we could actually uh, grow that to where you can nurture, engage with your people. And so my talk this morning is titled How to Turn a $37 Sale into a $50,000 coaching package. And so for years, my mentor, Ron Legrand, told me and got after me for years, says, Jay, you gotta have a membership site. You gotta have reoccurring continuity. And so I heard him say it, but I didn't take action on it until very, very recently. So by a show of hands, raise your hand if you have a paid reoccurring membership site where people pay every month. All right, so for those of you, it's like, Five of you. So for those of you that already have that in place, my encouragement to you is, is to pick up perhaps a couple of nuggets that I'm gonna share with you this morning as to what we're doing to engage with those members and how it leads to high-end coaching packages. For those of you that did not raise your hand and you do not have a re you know, monthly reoccurring membership members, I would highly encourage you to at least seriously consider adding that to your business plan for the reasons that I'm going to share with you here in a moment. I will go ahead and tell you this. I don't have the monthly membership primarily for the income that it produces. That's not the deal. Now, we just, Carol Joe and I just recently launched the membership just a few, mo a few months ago, and we've only got a few hundred people so far in the membership paying $37 a month. My goal is to, I mean, that's my total focus. My goal is to ASAP, Dustin, have 1,000 paying members. I heard Francis this morning, you got like 1,400, you know, and then another few hundred or whatever paying 97 a month. So I'm not doing it for the $37,000 a month, an initial goal. That's not the deal. The deal on the membership, whether you're charging like Francis 97, 39, or 37 like me, it's where is that going to go and take your business? So uh, Jason Drone, he shared his backstory. I'll give you my quick backstory for those of you that don't know me, we haven't met. So I was raised in the mobile home business, wobbly boxes. They got a bunch of them down here in Florida, right? They used to call them trailers, right? So my dad, Wallace Connor, that's what I was raised in. He had one time in the 80s, he had the largest retailing company of mobile homes in the country. So I was raised around this uh, service and product of providing affordable housing to people. Well, come along about um, 2002, uh, the consumer finance went away pretty much. 97% of the consumer finance went away for the product of mobile homes. And so we woke up one day with $22 million in wholesale inventory and no way to sell it. So I said, hmm, it's a whole lot more fun building a new company than it is shutting down a company. So I knew, and I'd known for years, if Carol Joy and I ever got out of the mobile home business, I wanted to get into single family houses. So in 2003, we, I, I didn't go to a seminar or anything. I just read some books, used my common sense from mobile home experience, and I looked in the Homes Magazine. Now, Dustin, you're not old enough to remember when realtors actually had monthly Homes Magazines, and they would put their houses every month in the monthly local magazine. So I looked for the ugliest, nastiest foreclosure I could find, and Carol Joy and my dad say, I found it. So we'd been on the market for like nine months, over 60 showings, I bought that house. Now this was a time when you could fog a mirror and get unsecured lines of credit at the bank. So I had a $250,000 unsecured line of credit at the local bank burning a hole in my pocket to go buy this bank owned property. So that's what I did. Now I was so proud of this home that I had under contract. $50,000 under contract. I took my dad there to the driveway. First I took Carol Joy, she wouldn't even get out of the car. And then I took my dad thinking he would endorse me and he would like it. He got out of the car, walked inside, looked at me, said, son, have you lost your mind? I said, I don't know, but we're getting ready to find out. Anyway, we bought it for 50,000, we put 50,000 rehab in it, and then sold it for 140,000 in like a month, and I didn't know what I was doing. I said, I like, I like this business. 
first year we just did three flips. So from 2003 to 2009, for six years, I relied, we relied on the local banks and institutional money to fund our deals. And then I got a wake up call. In January 2009, I was on the phone with my banker whose name at the time was Steve. The operative word in that sentence it was, he was my banker. And I'd had this conversation with Steve many, many times over the past six years. I said, Steve, I got two houses under contract. They represent over $100,000 in profit. I told him where they were located, the after repair value, the money needed to fund the deal and the closing date. And Steve goes quiet on the other end of the phone, which is never a good sign when your banker or your significant other goes quiet. Steve finally cleared his throat. He says, Jay, I'm sorry, but the bank has closed your line of credit. And uh, we had a perfect credit score. We'd had a great relationship for six years with Steve. And now I'm cut off and no way to fund my deals. I then woke up. I mean, we're in a very, very small town, 40,000 people is our total target market. And I learned very, very quickly that, oh, not only us, but the rest of the world <laughs> has gotten cut off, 2008, 2009. So I knew there had to be a better way to fund our deals. So I called my friend Jeff, who lived in Greensboro, North Carolina at the time. And I said, Jeff, he's a real estate investor. I said, Jeff, I said, I just got cut off from the banks. He said, welcome to the club. They just cut me off. I said, what are we going to do? He said, well, there's this guy by the name of Ron Legrand in Jacksonville, Florida, that can teach us how to get private money to fund our deals. I said, what's private money? He says, I don't know, but he says, we can get a lot of it. So there we went to Jacksonville, Florida, to learn about private money to fund our deals. And that was in 2009. So I started using private money.